Um, so thank you so much for, for joining us to present the film. Um, I'll start off with a couple questions, then we can open up to the audience. Um, so uh, the casting of this film is a little unusual, um, <laughs> to say. Uh, do you want to talk about that, what that sort of process was like, working with the director and everything? Like, how did you first become involved with the project, and, and what did what, what was the sort of um, genesis of her bringing you on? And Well, um, Anne-Marie was uh, very hesitating if to take me or not. Okay. Because I am the father of Saleh, <laughs> and it's very hard to work father with Saleh. I mean, I understand her very much. If I was in her shoes, maybe I was not taking me. <laughs> because it's really dangerous and not objective and full of emotion. And it's very complicated relationship. Always, it's always like that. I mean, but it works. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I believe in love. I believe that if there is a great love between you and your partner, especially if he is your real son. Son, uh, you cannot lie. <laughs> Impossible to lie. I mean, very hard. So, was so it was your son that she first brought into the project, and then you, or or together, or no? My son was. This is her, his third project with her. Right. She, she he worked with her in, in the both films before this one, mm -hmm. and uh, I was waiting uh, for more than two months for the answer. Uh, oh, really? Yes. I was, I was afraid she would not take me. But at least she decided to take a risk, and she did it. And I'm very proud and happy that she did it. And how did your son feel about it? Was he, was he excited? Was he nervous? Yes, he was very nervous. Really? Yeah. Uh, both. We both were very, ner very nervous because I said, I mean, uh, it wasn't easy, no. But what did he say? Did he say, like, I don't know if we should do this, or was he like... <laughs> you must ask him. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, well, let's, does someone in the audience have a question? Yes, sir, right here. Um, sir, I want to ask you about your character's relationship to Wajib, right? He wants to practice the traditional, formal wajib. But throughout the story, wajib is broken everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has any, the, the garbage men don't pick up, uh, the neighbor throws trash, people are fighting in the street, there's feuds throughout the city, even the relationship with uh, you know, Israeli settlers and spies. Uh, his wife abandoned him and won't return for the wedding. I mean, everyone has broken their, their sense of wajib to your character. But yet, it, it, so it's like your character has this formal, traditional, artificial wajib, but in reality, in the society, it's broken everywhere. Yeah. Could you talk a little Who's bit about that? Who's fault is it, though? So, you know what? When I was young, I thought that wajib is hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Now, I don't think so. And when I did the the role, I mean, when I played the character, when I was myself in the character, because I don't like to play, I mean, I don't believe in acting. You must be yourself. Um, I found out that he is honest, even if he has small lies, you know. And you, we know that he is lying here many times. And, uh, it's a white lie, you know? Yeah. And uh, I know what you are talking about, maybe because you are younger than me, so <laughs> you say that. Uh, there is a lot of hypocrisy in our society. I mean, there is a lot of against what I mean, what you say. A lot of uh, corruption. I think in every society in the world, the same thing. Corruption and people are far from God.
God, not the God, the religious God, the principle, and uh, less with the family, less loving each other, a lot of violence, a lot of hatred and racism between some people, religions like Muslims and Christians. Many bad things, but in the same time, this is our country, this is our society. We must love it in the same time. So it's uh, something and the opposite, something, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy. On one side uh, is our country, and on the other side, uh, somehow it is raped by the ruler. You cannot be yourself like my character. He's trying to be himself, but he is not himself. He's, he's, he's a weak man. He is broken man. He, 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 he doesn't have the, the courage to say what he thinks or what he wants or what he really uh, love and, and hope. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. I, I, I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is no idea. there is a lot of things that we don't like in our society, and, and Marie, as a director, criticized this society. But with the, this critic way of thinking and doing, uh, we love the country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and there are a lot of sort of contradictions built into yes, it. Yeah, exactly. The that's, yeah. that's, that's the word I was yeah, searching yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, other questions? I think I saw a hand right there. Yes, thank you. Yeah, working with your son, what kind of like personal dynamics or histories or nuances did you guys bring that the director didn't think of? So the question, for those who couldn't hear it, was um, did you bring any sort of personal things to, from your relationship with your son to working with him that maybe the director didn't think of personal nuances or <clears throat> history or look uh, I am like Shadi more in life I mean my character and he knows that and we like we knew that he tried to look at me in a tradition like 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 how I was looking to my father. He couldn't look at me as Muhammad because he knows that I'm the contrary of uh, Abu Shadi. I mean, and I raised him in this way to be the contrary of Abu Shadi. I mean, otherwise, who are you? Uh, I believe that everyone must be proud of what he is. Lee must be proud of he, he being American because he was born here and he didn't have the choice. Nobody had the choice be, where, where he wants to be born. So you must be proud. And um, Saleh couldn't look at me, you know, like uh, like Abu Shadi because he knows that I'm not. So in this case, he put for 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 uh, for. For, in order to be honest, uh, something instead. He tried to find the bad things that he don't like in my character and use them instead of looking like to Abu Shadi, the character. <laughs> Sometimes you must put something instead if you don't find it in your character. Yeah. You must put something instead, like, for example, uh, you, if if you lost, uh, if you if, if you, you your your son die in the film, I mean, and in reality it didn't happen. So you must find something instead of that in order to cover the feeling, to bring the feeling of uh, uh, the lost thing that you you have lost. So the same thing Saleh did. I was remembering. Um, my father and I actually honestly 
try to make uh, Osama father. Osama, the husband of Anne-Marie, father. So I was with him all the time, going with him to restaurants, speak with him, because he is the guy, more or less, of Abu Shari. He was a teacher, and he was dreaming to be, you know, headmaster, and uh, he's behaving like that, smiling to everybody, nice with everybody, and, uh, you know, as Abu Shari. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so I think there's a question here, this one, maybe the book, yes. Do you have a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just supporting. I don't have to have a question. I don't mind books. Okay. Does anyone have a, ch a question? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm finishing. And that it's a book that is all about all this that's happening in Arab life in the world. Uh -huh. And Adam Shin program. I'm sorry. You had a question about. Will there be a sequel for the wedding? Is there a sequel to the film for the wedding and Christmas? We must ask Anne Marie. <laughs> Uh, if it wins at the Oscars, we'll do the sequel. <laughs> yeah. um, a gentleman in the back here has a question. Uh, the film was seemed to be shot in the streets of uh, Nazareth. Um, certainly there was a sense of the presence of the occupation. Uh, was the film shot with full permits and permissions? So the question is, um, because you have these fantastic locations in Nazareth, did you, I mean, do you know if there was any problems getting permits or permission to shoot in? In those locations? Well, Nazareth was occupied in 1948, before I was born. <laughs> I mean, people, three generations were born after the occupation, after 1948, and they became automatically citizens in it. Because if you are born in Israel, automatically you, you become, like in America, become citizen of America, citizen of Israel. So it's different between, I mean, generations. Every generation feels in, in, uh, in different way to the occupation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a citizens, as we, we have a municipality, so we did everything uh, officially by the law, permissions and papers and all what. Uh, the only place that we, we couldn't work uh, free, I mean, uh, it was very hard to do it, it's in Nazareth uh, elite, Nazareth elite, it's a uh, Nazareth elite, it's the, the upper. Yes, the, the new, the new settlement up of Nazareth. Uh, they made some problems for us. We couldn't do it uh, easily. And uh, they even stopped the shooting uh, one day and we, we, we were forced to find some alternative, alternative place to, to shoot it. It was not easy. But by the law, they couldn't uh, forbid us to do it because it's, uh, we, did, we do not do anything against the law. We, we are doing film, you know, and filmmakers, we are trying to, to do the film. Uh, so they couldn't uh, forbid us. But they were not happy with our uh, presence uh, in Nazareth. They were not happy. Interesting. Um, I think we have time for one or two more questions. Yes, ma'am, right here. You're in Italy, and you're with your PLO girlfriend, and you're worried about Palestinians coming back to this place, but I'm living here. What did you think about saying that? So the question is, um, how did you feel about the line that you had to say where you're like, talking about you're living in Italy with your PLO girlfriend, but I'm living here. How did that feel to deliver that line? Honestly, I didn't like this scene. I didn't like the, I was afraid of this scene because I don't really believe that I can think so. Uh, I forced myself to say that. I forced myself to be convinced and to convince the other, the audience. Uh, it was very hard. This the most hard, hardest scene for me in the film because I really don't believe in what Abu Shabi said. I believe more of Shadi. What Shadi said. 
because as, as I said, the life is meaningless without pride and without being yourself. It's meaningless. So I identify more with Shadi, but I am an actor and I must take responsibility for, for, the, for the character. So I believe in that. Um, so I think I see someone in the back here for one, maybe one last question. You, you have had a very interesting career in that you've been in pa several Palestinian films and several Israeli films. And so your career mirrors your life. You live two worlds. You're, you're legally an Israeli, but you you're identify as Palestinian. That That's a, a complicated area. Can you talk a little bit about the, the film industries? I know there are Israeli films just for Israelis, Palestinians, but there's some overlap. There's a little bit like films like this. Israelis make some films about Palestinian issues sometimes. Can you talk about that area? And specifically in this film, has it been shown in either Israel proper or in the territory in Palestine? And if so, how has it been received? So the question is about how Israeli and Palestinian films are different and how they overlap, and if you could speak a little bit towards that with your personal experience, and um, about how the film has been received also in various different audiences. Well, actually it was, we had one screening in Nazareth, uh, not in Nazareth, sorry, in Ramallah, okay. um, a, um, a month ago, maybe less, and it was not shown until now in, in, in Nazareth or in, in, in Israel. It was not shown until now. So I don't know how they will act, how, 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 how they will react to the film. I really don't know. About myself, I feel I'm, I'm Palestinian who is living in Israel and I have an Israeli citizenship. And the, 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 this situation is like to be schizophrenic, you know. You, you know, on one side you feel Palestinian, and the other side you have an Israeli passport. And when I was young, more young, I, I used to work in the Hebrew theater in Haifa, in Habima, in Jerusalem, in uh, Kamer, everywhere, I mean. I started my life, actually, but with the Israeli theater, we did uh, a play by Arthur Miller, uh, The View from the Bridge. This was my first play in, uh, in the theater. And later on, um, you know, we, you live in the village, you, you work in the town, you come back to the village, you, 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 the village life and the village society and the Palestinian society is very different from the Israeli society. So you must always make, making like switch, switching yourself. When you are in the village, you are Palestinian. When you are in the Israeli side, you must be an Israeli and you speak the language very well and uh, you must be a part of. But little by little, by the years, when you, you, you get older and things are happening all the time. I mean, it's very intensive place and very intensive happening, things happening there between Palestinians and Israelis. We don't have peace, we are in war, we, we don't have good relationship. The occupation is still there, the palace, the Israeli palace is still occupying, conquering the land and, and the people. And little by little, I, I, I started asking myself the question of identity, who are you, where are you, what do you want to say, to who you are related, and little by little, I became a little bit farer from the Israeli theater and the cinema, especially uh, when things were happening, like the war, the first war, the second war, the third war. A few generations of refugee became after the 67, after the 90, uh, 1948, after the 82. And when you are living that schizophrenic uh, situation, and you are related to, to, to your people, and you are living in your state, it's affecting you. And, and little by little, I found myself that I must be myself, I must be loyal to, to my people, because my people are suffering and it's, it's as a result of the occupation, as a result of the racism, as a result of the increasing of the, the, the right wing uh, in Israel, like the, the government now. 
So little by little, I found myself out of the blue, out of Israel theater, and out of uh, Israeli cinema, especially after I did the film Jenin Jenin, and I was attacked by the Israeli government and by the Israeli media after I made Jenin Jenin in, 19, uh, in 2002. So from 2002 until now, I worked maybe in two or three uh, projects, uh, which was not in the mainstream uh, theater and, and, and uh, cinema. I did one play in, 19, uh, in 2004, and I did one play here in uh, New York about the Holocaust of the Jews from Libya. But besides that, uh, I didn't do many things. I mean, uh, in 2011, I did one uh, film called uh, uh, Desperado uh, Square, Desperado Square with Israeli, but uh, I'm actually not working anymore with the Israelis, but, and somehow it's uh, like, um, I find this very hard to work in, because polit politically I cannot agree to the mainstream, the Israeli mainstream, and I cannot find myself working in them. Yeah, difficult position. Well, um, yeah. thank you so much for bringing the film and articulating so much about it to us. I really appreciate you coming here. Thank you. Thank you all so much for staying. And thank you. Very much.